Hey guys and welcome back to another Google Opal video. Today we're going to be going over how inputs work and what are the different inputs as well as what is an input in your little mini apps you have here. So we're going to create a new app and you'll have this little user input tab at the top that you can click. So either when building an agent you can either just start with clicking this user input tab or you can at the bottom have it create an app just by you prompting the AI itself and then there will be in there different user input sections. But for now we're just going to look at it like this. So when you have a user input like this it's always just what the creator is trying to get out of the user. So if the creator just wants to say know the user's name they would write a little prompt in here saying enter your name or if they wanted to enter a topic they can say enter a topic. It can just be a wide range of things. So something a creator might want is to know their name, whatever topic they're trying to research, and let's say what they want to get out of it. I don't know. It can be something, any other random thing like that. So you can actually have multiple user inputs. So if you did then want to have all three of those things, you don't put it all in one, you can have it as three different inputs. So those inputs can then be taken and they can be put into different generate steps. So if you wanted to comprise all of these user inputs into one generate, you can do that. You can just drag it over. And then basically this generate here is going to take information from each of the three different user inputs. Yeah, it's important to mention no step will have access to these inputs unless you explicitly give it access like this. So if only these two had arrows drawn here, this input could not be used in this generate step. Another thing you can do with this is that there's different types of inputs. So if you head over to this app section up at the top and you click start, you'll see this little plus icon in the bottom left hand corner. So if you click on it, you'll see a couple different things. So you have upload from your device, add YouTube video, add, Google, add from Google Drive, add a drawing, and add a webcam video. So upload from device is pretty simple. It's just going to be an upload feature. So if you want the user to have to upload a document, then it will prompt them. You can prompt them, oh, upload uh, your resume. And then say you're building an agent that is going to need their resume to then go and find a job for them or whatever it is. Then this is a, a way to do it. You can say upload from your device. They will go to their files after clicking this. And then they can go and they can just upload it. Another thing then you have is YouTube video. So say you want someone to be able to study off of a YouTube video. You can then say, okay, what YouTube video do you want to study for? So they put in the YouTube video, you can insert it. Then you could have it go into a generate step, which will create a little quiz for them or something. But that's just one use case of the YouTube video. Another thing you can do is you can add from your Google Drive. Google Drive can be used in many different ways. You can say add a Google Doc and then we will then be able to see that information with your Google Doc in the same way that you can see from like a file or an upload feature. Or you could then say, oh, can you upload a Google Sheet if it's going to be something where the creator wants to see a Google Sheet that the user has and then they can take in that Google Sheet and go and they can actually create another Google Sheet based off that information, maybe making it more complex or just doing like basic work for you. So if you needed to go through every single thing in the Google Sheet and you had to look at all that information, you had to go research each thing in it, you can have a little app do this by having them input a Google Sheet. The next thing here you have is add a drawing. So when you click this, it brings up this little like drawing pad, which you can go and draw like a little smiley face on. There's different uses for this. I mean, I think the way I see it is that it's probably going to be used for if you want to draw something and then put that into a generate step that will then create an image based on your drawing. So if you drew a little thing here and you wanted the AI to go and make it look more professional and whatever, then that could be a use for this. Another use is it could be for signatures if you need to have a signature at the bottom of your document or anything like that. The next thing is add webcam video. So this will be just going to look at through your webcam and then you can record a video and you can send it to the AI and you could probably then go from there and you can use the video generation step and you can say, 
oh, can you make this into an animated art, art style? So it's going to be your video that you just recorded, but looks animated. Uh, yeah, and that's what that steps for. Yeah, another thing to note is that this text here, it can change based on whatever you input here. So if you type in here, just like enter name, and then you run this, see it'll it'll change like that. Another thing is if you want to restrict your users to providing only a certain kind of input, for instance let's say you only want them to upload something, you can go down here in the bottom right corner, click advanced settings, input type, and then select one specific input type and now that's all they'll be able to put. Yeah, so there's many different ways you can use inputs and these are just some of the ways outlining how to use it and how it really works. Another thing you can do is if you drag from one of the inputs just out into the abyss right here, then you can have it create a generate thing. It's just another way to go and create your agents. So it can go like that instead of having to click generate at the top and then drag it over. And I think that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned all about Google Opal inputs and I hope to see you in the next video.